I'm blown away. Yesterday, I made a video that honestly I thought was going to get like 2,000 views. I did not think this video was going to do well, but I wanted to cover it because I thought it was really important to address the potential disaster that's happening at UPS. And even though I initially dismissed it, I realized my mistake that this is not something that we should be dismissing. We should be paying attention to what's going on at UPS. Because even though technically we're in a freight recession and freight volumes and package and parcel volumes are plummeting, revenues aren't really plummeting at companies like UPS. And UPS's margins are still doing pretty dang well. Despite this, you have UPS walking away from negotiations with arguably one of the, the largest unions, uh, actually probably the largest union in, in freight and, and a very, very large union of almost uh, you know, what, one third of a million individuals. It's remarkable. And uh, yesterday in the video where we talked about this potential for an inflationary spike due to a UPS strike, think about it, snarled supply chains, delayed inventory accrual, meaning potentially higher prices for goods and services again, as people are now creating, or as businesses and individuals are creating wait times again, this could be a disaster. I mean, even just the threat of a strike could lead to more ordering uh, and, and individuals basically uh, stocking up earlier again, potentially driving up temporarily, at least CPI and PPI uh, in future months because people potentially are worried that uh, somebody who handles somewhere around 37% of shipments, UPS, which company, not somebody, uh, it, it might completely shut down uh, historically for as long as maybe two and a half weeks, likely for potentially up to a week before UPS realizes they need to negotiate with the Teamsters Union. But what I wanted to say, what I was blown away by, well, I guess I should say before what I was blown away by, is I want to give you a quick reiteration as well, that in addition to going through the earnings at UPS, I actually think it's very, very important that UPS make sure they A, deal with this. This It will probably, my expectation, get dealt with before the end of the month. I think that would be very smart. I think the 28th is prob probably a good target. That would be a Friday, right? I, I think that's a Friday. Before the 29th and 30th. Uh, the 31st, I think, is a Monday. That, that'd be a really good last opportunity to get, get this done. Uh, and uh, it would be nice to make sure there is no shutdown. But what was mind-blowing was I went into that video yesterday knowing that 97% uh, of Teamsters unions were for this strike. But I was more mind-blown by the support this video got. I, again, thought this video was going to get like 1,000 views. And, like it was going to be super niche and super small of a topic, but no, it was the best performing video I posted yesterday with uh, over 70,000 views in, in just a matter of hours. Uh, and I'm going to look at some of the commentary here. Look at some of what we got. This is incredible. I worked with them during the holidays. The drivers get a great deal. They earn it though, running up and down 100 plus driveway, driveways and uh, steps every day except Sundays planning and consolidating all your packages for efficiency and doing it safely. It made me a better driver. They do so many details Amazon doesn't. UPS workers will, I'm going to heart this, UPS, and I really want to dive into some of the reactions here and see what, what we're getting, if we can glean any insights. UPS workers will never go work for Amazon. It's a massive downgrade in pay and benefits if you actually look at the details. This is amazing. I mean, these. I'm not in the freight industry, but clearly, there is a big difference between the professionalism that you get at UPS and, and Amazon, you know, from, from what we're getting from the comments here. And you, you kind of see this too, so, but let's just leave that there. All right. Uh, so uh, nobody from UPS is going to work for Amazon. They'll have to take a 50% pay cut, uh, which, uh, you know, I will say this is actually an interesting argument. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. On one hand... The, the UPS union is saying we need more pay, but then on the other hand, we're saying, yeah, but the competition is paying way less. So I think that's probably a, an argument that doesn't bode too well for the UPS unions, that the competition is paying way less. Probably doesn't support their argument. But I will say, I, I mean, we've got a UPS guy that's been servicing us for like, I don't know, a decade now, it feels like. I think it's been eight years that we've been here. His name is Brian. This guy's amazing. I mean, he always he tells me about his retirement, how uh, how he loves working for the company. Uh, maybe not recently with the, this threat of strike going on. I should talk to him again when I see him. Actually, I got a UPS scheduled for delivery today. See, and I wouldn't be getting that if there were a strike. 
oh, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> like, this is personally going to affect us too, right? But anyway, uh, he's got two kids. I bet he had two kids. He might have had a third now. But he's one of the happiest guys I've ever seen. I think one of the reasons he's so happy is because he legitimately loves his job. And if anybody's like Brian at UPS, it, that it must originally or ordinarily be a great place to work. Somebody here says, I worked for UPS for 11 years. There was a strike threat basically every time there was a new contract coming up. The drivers make very good wages once they hit full scale. The benefits are basically the gold standard there too, even for part-timers. Highly doubt anyone would move to Amazon. Uh, wow. Zero AC working in 100-degree trailers loading by hand. Oh, at Amazon. Yikes. Uh, I talked to a UPS worker, and he says the air condition is like a bandage. He's ready to go on strike. Okay, interesting. I work for UPS. No one will leave if the strike goes on long enough. They'll just work and get shunned by everyone striking. Looking forward to the strike. Let's go. Interesting. Not overstaffed. All UPS drivers are complaining about excessive forced overtime, especially in this heat. Now, this is actually really interesting. I didn't know this. And, uh, you know, obviously this, this comment's getting a lot of attention here. I uh, was under the impression that if freight volumes were declining, that uh, it, it'd be possible that uh, you'd have too much staff. But it appears that's wrong. Uh, okay, good to know. As a current employee, I agree with Kevin when he says the strike will be short. The staffing comment is off, though. The summer isn't friendly, so we will get a lot of quits and management claims we are understaffed. Interesting. So you get a lot of quits in the summer. That's very interesting. This is very insightful. This, this, this gives, I mean, really very functional comments, uh, commentary here. Uh, so I see them driving with the doors open. AC must not be a benefit for them. I think that's honestly an efficiency thing. Imagine you have to open the door every single time to get in and out. I, I'm not sure about that. You know, you, like, this is, if back in Florida, back when you drive around a convertible on a hot day, I found you would actually have to blast the AC with the top open of the convertible just to enjoy it because it's so hot that you have to have the AC on and the top down. <laughs> Uh, so, but really, the support here is, is, is absolutely incredible. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some more uh, news that we have here. Uh, we need some more strikes to get companies to uh, uh, learn. Vanguard owns 9% of, EPA, of, of uh, UPS. Uh, wage price spiral coming. All unions getting 20% rages this year. Some of that could be lagging, though. Ryan Reynolds, I love your show. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So what are, what are some of the latest uh, updates that we have here before we get over to the course member live? Just remember to join that. Uh, we've got an expiring coupon code in about uh, one week and six days uh, for the Fed meeting. We'll have an expiration there. And email us at snap at meetkevin.com if you have questions on those or just go to meetkevin.com to learn more. So uh, the wider variety of alternative carriers today versus 1997, the last time UPS Teamsters went on strike, and softer delivery demand are key reasons why this strike is possible. Uh, see, that's interesting. This aligns more with my original argument that I think there's, there's potentially, you know, if you have less demand for, for uh, parcels, th then potentially that could lead to more of a, 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 an aggressiveness from UPS. As a result, shippers have less of an appetite to accept aggressive rate hikes. Well, obviously, workers would probably argue that they're not aggressive rate hikes, but anyway... Uh, from uh, oh, oh this is from uh, from um, from UPS oh interesting so there's this argument here that maybe people who are shipping are less interested in paying higher fees for for uh, UPS but then again you look at the revenues and they're through the roof despite the decline in uh, actual parcel numbers. Yeah, UPS has no rate increase to announce, a spokesperson said. The carrier periodically evaluates its prices to ensure they reflect the value they provide. UPS and FedEx and other carriers typically announce annual rate increases in the second half of the cal calendar year. Last year, 6.9, oh, classic number, 6.9% increase from UPS cited it, the, the need to support ongoing expansion and enhance its capabilities as reasons for its implementation of the price hike. The one thing we do know is that rates will go up at some point in the future, uh, but how much of that is due to uh, giving up or, or, or giving in with the Teamsters is anyone's guess. They have to remain competitive. It remains to be seen how much wages will increase in the next contract. Uh, it looks like they're also hitting roadblocks over specifically part-time pay. Yeah, however, uh, it does look like the conclusions we're getting here, at least from Wall Street, are that UPS employees are poised to see higher wages. So there's going to be some kind of win coming here. Uh, FedEx and others would capitalize on higher rates. One limiting factor, uh, one factor limiting how much UPS can raise rates is its competitor, FedEx. 
two delivery chi uh, giants consistently stay in lockstep with each other. Although I will say, UPS, when we looked at the margin yesterday, had substantially better margins than FedEx. Uh, but it's not just then, it's also alternative parcel carriers like OnTrack and LSO. And then, of course, you've got Amazon. Uh, okay, interesting. Weaker demand complicates price hikes. This is the weaker demand for the parcels. Makes sense. UPS demand cooling off after a uh, pandemic surge. The company's average daily volume by quarter. What's happened in the last year is carrier pricing power has diminished significantly, which means it's going to be harder to for UPS to pass on the rate increases. Uh, and that's why they seem to be stuck with pressure for wage hikes while not being able to potentially pass those on, which means margins will get squeezed. But then again, margins are already so good. All right, so that gives us a little bit more here. Uh, here's a USA Today piece that uh, argues, let's see here, what are they arguing? A USA Today piece on this. Uh, UPS workers may go on strike, what it means for you. All right, let's see here. The last time they went on strike was 97 consumers could face, uh, uh, let's see, small businesses struggle to restock their shelves and hospitals had a hard time securing supplies, according to the NYT. Consumers could face that and more if this Teamsters Union, Teamsters Union uh, goes on strike and they do not reach a deal by the end of the month. If a deal does occur, it will be very disruptive, says the Department for Supply Chain Management at Michigan, Michigan State University. Consumers are going to be more affected getting everyday products we buy online. That is an interesting thing. Back in 97, you didn't have uh, what you had today, Amazon. Uh, and that's potentially going to make a strike even more disruptive this time around than ever before. That honestly gives the union a lot more bargaining power. But it, it's going to be it's going to be a problem because if there is a strike, it is going to affect inflation. Uh, and, and we don't want that. Like, we got good inflation reports here. Please, UPS. And, you know, obviously, it, it's a give and take. But both sides, figure this out. We don't want, nobody wants to go on strike. Uh, but I understand people will. If a strike does place, uh, take place, it would be the largest strike in employer history. Wow. Uh, that's actually incredible. Uh, largest strike in, in uh, U.S. history, that is. Even a short-lived strike could have huge impacts for consumers. I agree with that. Uh, they have a large network. Taking the kind of capacity out of the market, even for a day, will have ripple effects and nearly 25 million packages daily. Longer wait times are expected during the strike as shipping centers like FedEx and the USPS deal with an influx of, uh, influx of packages to try to make up the volumes. And there's no way they're going to be able to make that up. FedEx will prioritize existing customers while trying to get people to switch, of course. Supply chain disruptors, uh, spare parts for motor vehicles. And this is already where we're getting inflationary concerns, right? You have inflationary concerns at, uh, in, in, in insurance services, in motor vehicle services. Uh, not good. These are places you already have inflationary concerns, and they could get even worse. Supply chain, healthcare supply chain could take a hit since wholesale companies that manufacture medical devices and supplies rely heavily on companies like UPS. Other industries with dealers that rely on getting spare parts from wholesalers via UPS, including farming and construction. And that's another thing. It's the construction industry. It's just absolutely blowing up right now because the home builders have such big pee, -pee because there's so little inventory uh, for housing. The home builders have so much pricing power, pee, -pee uh, that last thing you want is a shorter delivery time for Amazon construction material. You know, we're, I did just post a link for course members for the live stream. Uh, sorry, we are uh, going to just do the bell here really quickly. Usually we have a tradition of doing the bell uh, together with course members. Uh, so we'll get the bell together here. That's, that's gonna be uh, opening bell I, here I, need, I need to keep talking about this inflation for just a moment. We'll start with a story, but quickly let's hit the bell together here. A ride hailing app in Turkey celebrating a recent listing via SPAC at the NASDAQ. Uh, Abacus Life, a buyer of life insurance policies recently listed via... Sorry, out of tradition, we always, we like to do the bell together. I, every day... I really enjoy doing the bell. Generally do it with course members, but I, I just have to keep talking about this UPS issue because it's actually a big deal. Um, <clears throat> I, wanna, I wanna give this example. I spoke with, um, it was, it wasn't, it was, uh, I, I, I bought this computer uh, from this company called I Buy Power. And uh, first of all, never buy from them. Their customer service was, was like outright rude to me. I, I literally, I paid for rush uh, production on July 1st, and they're like, cool, we'll ship your product out by the 6th. And I'm like, really? 
paying $200 for rush production or whatever was $100 to $200. Rush production is going to take until July 6th. Like, I get it. There's July 4th, but that's one day. Anyway, so that was lame. But then they're like, oh, we'll overnight it. And I'm like, okay, fine. If you overnight it on Thursday, it'll show up on Friday. But they didn't get it out until Friday. And then they overnight it. And they're like, oh, well, we don't mean weekend overnight. We mean business day overnight. And then it's supposed to show up on Monday, this Monday, just, you know, three or four days ago. But it doesn't show up on Monday because it gets delayed because they got it to FedEx, the carrier, too late. And so then it doesn't show up until Tuesday. But the point is, like, we, we had, like, you know, a lot of things lined up in the business. So from, like, a personal anecdotal level, we're like, ah, oh, we really wanted that computer. That's why we paid for a rush for it. And, like, that's just one box. <laughs> um, UPS is delivering $25 million a day. And everyone's stuff is just as important as somebody else's. With the exception, obviously, of like hospitals. We could probably say they're a little bit more important. But anyway, other industries with dealers that rely on getting spare parts from wholesalers via UPS, including farming and construction. Consumers are not going to be the only ones. It's a new shock to the supply chain. This is literally the last thing we want. Please, we want inflation to stay good. Don't ruin it, UPS. A strike could also raise the cost of shipping, even if delivery companies don't increase their rates amid a stoppage. UPS customers may need to turn to higher-priced alternatives from a competitor or pay for expedited shipping elsewhere. Didn't even think about that. I mean, think about it. If you're like, okay, my stuff is sitting at the UPS store, it's not getting picked up, I'm going to take my box back. Now I lost a day or two. Now I have to pay for overnight, where ordinarily I could have just paid for ground. I had another service provider to get my product where I need on time. That's not great. It increases, increases your producer costs. Uh, hits margins. It's just not good. Uh, a strike could also raise the cost of the chip. Right, we talked about that. That's actually a good piece by the USA Today. It may, it may not be an immediate change in prices, but it is maybe leaning into some direct payments for more expedited shipment, right? What can consumers do? Shop online, do it now. But honestly, even the recommendations to shop online now... It, it, you know, just basically accelerates the inflation and pricing pressure that you end up getting now. Other shoppers should consider uh, shopping in person, which is also more expensive, and avoid uh, or ordering pickup to avoid delivery delays, a feat that should be easier to accomplish amid warmer weather months. Uh, oh, it's a blessing in disguise that this is happening in the summer. Well, maybe not for the drivers because <laughs> you got to drive around in the heat. But this is intense. And uh, what's remarkable is at least what I'm seeing is I'm seeing no progress uh, on this, and I really hope we get more progress on this. Uh, but uh, it, it doesn't look like it's coming yet. Uh, I am going to, I want to take a peek at uh, Barron's take on this. So uh, the International uh, Brotherhood Teamsters put out a statement saying UPS has walked away from talks, right? That's what we talked about last uh, video yesterday. Uh, I guess the actual average number of packages delivered per day is 24.3, a little less than that, 25 I mentioned. Uh, just to get a little bit more uh, exact. And again, mark your calendar for July 31st. Because July 31st is, uh, is, is when we need a deal buy. If you go to carrier... Okay, well, that's actually a USA Today reprint. It's looking at the carrier uh, journal. And uh, I'm going to look at NPR's piece on it quickly. I know some people don't like NPR. Everything's getting so politicized these days. It's just freaking exhausting. Uh, but uh, NPR does call them much more vulnerable in the event of a strike this time around uh, to basically other companies taking over. Now, that's also a downside for both sides, right? Because you don't want UPS volumes to end up going somewhere else because then you ultimately have less packages. So it's really important this just gets dealt with for both, both sides, the Teamsters and UPS before the 31st, but also the entire economy. So please get it figured out. Uh, anyway... Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for uh, joining me on uh, the Meet Kevin Report, episode 122. I've got to jump to the course member live stream. I'm already late, and quite frankly, I need to make another cup of coffee really quickly. So I will be there in about three to four minutes as soon as the coffee is done brewing. Thank you all so much. Please check out the courses if you like my perspectives. Link down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Now, I want you to know this. When it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced.